All right, welcome. We are continuing on with our unit two interactions among branches of government review. And today we are focusing on topic 2.9, the legitimacy of the judicial branch. So we're talking about legitimacy of the judicial branch, right, the enduring understanding. Again, we're talking about uh, the design of the judicial branch protects the Supreme Court's independence as a branch of government and the emergence and use of judicial review remains a powerful judicial practice. That's kind of a big idea, right? Uh, the learning objective, again, this is what students will be able to do with the knowledge and the essential knowledge is the essential knowledge that students must know, the knowledge that students must know or must know. Right? So the learning objective, students will be able to explain how the exercise of judicial review in conjunction with life tenure can lead to debate about the legitimacy of the Supreme Court's power, right? So we know that judges are appointed for life. All federal judges serve for life, including Supreme Court judges. They're appointed by the president, confirmed by the Senate, but once that process goes through and they're confirmed by the Senate, they serve for life, right? And then the essential knowledge, right? This is what you must know as a student. Precedents in stare decisis play an important role in judicial decision making, right? So here we're talking about the uh, legitimacy of the Supreme Court's power. What does the Supreme Court do? They make decisions, right? They interpret the Constitution. They make decisions about these constitutional questions that come that arise from uh, the people, really, right? So the precedents are the decisions that are set which are kind of, they're the first decision set, which kind of paved the way for other decisions, right? So we do know that precedents can be overturned, right? But for the most part, stare decisis, the reliance, the, 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 literally it's Latin for let the decision stand, right? Stare decisis is let the decision stand. The Supreme Court's made its ruling. It's interpreted the, the, the Constitution independently. Right, free from political pressure, and this is the decision that they've made. Uh, so, a key example, good example here, required Supreme Court case Roe v. Wade. Right, the Supreme Court rules that the right to an abortion, the right to privacy, although it's not specifically listed in the Constitution, right, it's inherent through other powers and amendments in the Constitution. First. Uh, the Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, right? The Tenth Amendment, the Ninth and Tenth Amendments, right? Um, that there's this possession of, of private property and that we have this right to privacy in our own personal lives. Um, and that's the decision that's been set. And uh, states can kind of interpret it how they want, but a woman has a right to decide whether to have an abortion or not, right? This right to privacy includes the right to an abortion. So that's the precedent that's been set by the court. Uh, can they be overturned? Of course, right? We look at Plessy versus Ferguson and the segregation laws requiring separate facilities for blacks and whites, separate but equal, right? Which is later overturned by the uh, required Supreme Court case Brown versus Board of Education, right? These play an important role in judicial decision-making, right? The reliance on past decisions, the reliance on precedent often is, is uh, Important, it's integral when making decisions in the for the court, right? And then ideological changes in the composition of the Supreme Court due to presidential appointments, right? So ideological changes, is the court more liberal or conservative, right? Based on the presidents that appoint them. Right, based on these president's appointments, that led to the courts establishing new or rejecting existing precedents. Right, so uh, overall, basically, we know that judges serve for life. So the the judges that appoint the presidents that appoint these judges, right, can only serve for two terms. But oftentimes, the judges can serve longer than that; They'll serve for life. Right, and based on the presidential appointments, who they appoint, right, based on is the president Republican? If the president's Republican, he's more likely going to appoint a conservative judge. And if the president's Democrat, he's going to look for more uh, liberal judges, right? And this can lead to this ideological changes of the court can lead to uh, upholding or overturning these precedents. Thanks.